Welcome to Russian History with Dr. Bravkin. Today we continue the series of lectures on the Russian Civil War. Today I'd like to talk about the one of the most um, vicious crimes against humanity that was committed by the Bolshevik communist regime of Lenin and Trotsky, and that is the massacre of the Cossacks, or it is in Russian known as Raskazachivanie or Dekozakization. So let me just first introduce the Cossacks. Who are the Cossacks and uh, why they were so dangerous for the Bolshevik regime? The Cossacks basically are um, peasants who are armed. That's in a very simple way. They were free peasants. They received their charter from Catherine II and they were uh, settled on the frontier, open frontier area, which means that they had to defend the, uh, the open frontier. Open frontier means southern Russia, means uh, areas facing the Black Sea and the uh, uh, Caucasus Mountains. And the reason they had to be defended is because the, um, the Turks and the Chechens and others uh, used to do the raids into the countryside and kidnap men and women, but mostly women, and then they would be selling them on the uh, slave markets of Constantinople and other parts of Ottoman Empire. So this is why the Cossacks were militarily organized so that they would till the land, they would live in villages that were called stanitsas, uh, but they would work in the fields like other Russian peasants, but with a rifle. Uh, and they would be militarily organized. What does that mean? It means that uh, every stanitsa or every village would have an elder who would be elected official and it would be called a hundredth. So he would be a leader of a hundred horsemen. So all Cossacks would elect uh, their leader at Ataman, he was called, in a circle, which is called a Cossack circle. So in the, in the old times, this is what exactly was like. It would be all men would sit in the circle, a hundred of them, and they would elect their leader, Ataman of a hundred. And then the hundreds would elect an, an Ataman of a thousand, and then there would be an Ataman of, this, of the ten thousand. In other words, all these uh, villages had a church, and basically at the at the bell of the church uh, that would ring, uh, the, that means a summons, that means summons uh, of the army. And uh, with this kind of military organization, the, the Cossacks could basically mobilize an army of 10,000 men in one day. Uh, and that is, that's what it's designed to do, to repel an immediate attack uh, of the Chechens or Turks or other thieves uh, from the south. Uh, so this is uh, to prevent women kidnapping, and sometimes they would go into more serious offensives. Now, as the time went on, the Cossacks became, became most loyal and most reliable troops of the Tsar. Uh, they were very patriotic, they were monarchists, they believed in the Tsar, the fatherland, and uh, religion, and Orthodox Church. They, they were very, very reliable, and this is why uh, there was one other mention in our lectures about Cossacks, and they were the ones who were with General uh, Krasnov, and they were with uh, Kornilov uh, in 1917 when they were rushed to St. Petersburg, Petrograd at that time, and they refused. They just did, basically decided not to fight, uh, and that sealed the fate of Kornilov's offensive. In any case, uh, when the Bolsheviks overran Ukraine and South Russia, the Cossacks were leaderless because the regime of uh, Ataman Krasnov collapsed, and essentially they overran all of Ukraine and all of Don and Kubine area in the south. Uh, this was South Russia, not Ukraine, uh, and, um, uh, and established the Soviet power. So this is the introduction to the events that were uh, to follow. Now, immediately, this is like January, uh, early February 1919, uh, the, the, there were two authorities of the Bolsheviks in the area. One is called the Don Bureau of the CP, Communist Party, and the other one was the Southern Front. Now, they were kind of competing who is, whose authority would be a more important one, and the, basically it's like the Communist Party uh, structure versus the army structure, and the army meant the Red Army, and that meant ultimately Trotsky. So this was uh, the, the two kind of prong uh, occupation of the of the uh, Don area. Now, also the Don Bureau of the CP, uh, 
basically reported that there were no communists in the area whatsoever and that the Cossacks were electing their leaders traditionally uh, and therefore they had no social support in the area. Now, um, it, one of the things that, that begins this cycle of violence that would lead to massacre and uh, uh, vicious crimes uh, was a decree of Trotsky, uh, which is known in history as decozakization or raskazachevanie. Uh, and and this, is, uh, this is something that triggered the events. Here's, here's what it said. Uh, the policy of decozakization was, number one, confiscation of Cossack lands, and number two, resettlement of, quote, alien elements outside of the Cossack lands, uh, redistribution of Cossack lands to poor and loyal migrants from Russia, Russian peasants from the interior, and finally, mer quote, mercilessly clear Don area of Cossacks, Atamans, and offices. Uh, uh, then what followed is the beginning of the policy of decozakization was the order that Cossacks to surrender arms. Now, I should remind my listeners that uh, Trotsky issued a similar order a year earlier to the Czechoslovak region, and the Czechoslovaks rebelled, and this caused the Bolsheviks loss of all of Siberia uh, for, for a year. And even at that time, they, they were still fighting Kolchak, uh, facing them in the Urals. So Trotsky makes his second gravest mistake uh, by ordering to uh, disarm Cossacks. This just shows he doesn't understand the culture of the Cossacks. To, to, uh, to disarm Cossacks is to dishonor them. They would never, ever accept being disarmed. They lived with their arms and rifles next to their fields for centuries, and so they were not just going to do it. Now, once they uh, refused, uh, there was a second order, and this is the escalation of the struggle, uh, and I quote, those who refuse were shot on the spot. Uh, so they were, this is the beginning of mass executions. Uh, to, at first, just one, uh, the leaders of the Cossack Stanitsas, uh, and, um, uh, and then it just kind of picked up and went on. On the 16th of February, the Cossack land holding is abolished. So there's, they don't have any more title to the land, uh, which they had for centuries. The Cur Cossack Circle Assembly, which is their form of government, is also as 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 uh, abolished, no more. So uh, Sergei Sertsov, he's the Don Bureau of the Communist Party, reported to Lenin on the progress of decozakization. Uh, that means, this is very important, that the correspondence that I saw in the archives proves beyond any reasonable doubt that the mass murder that was going to be committed was on the orders of Lenin and Trotsky. And that's not some kind of regional authority or anything like this. This is directly from Moscow, uh, and this is going to be happening as I describe in a minute. <clears throat> Specifically, uh, the document is uh, ostensibly from the CP uh, Communist Party Central Committee, but I can tell you from the, knowing the style of Lenin's writing, this is his voice. That's definitely 24th of January 1919, and here is the order. Quote, in view of the experience of the civil war against the Cossacks, it is necessary to recognize the unique correctness of the most merciless struggle against the upper strata of Cossacks by their extermination to the last man. No compromise, no half measures. It is necessary to conduct mass terror against the rich Cossacks by exter exterminating them to the last man. So these are Lenin's words. Now, can you imagine a government that openly decides on a mass murder of a segment of the population? Uh, this is totally unprecedented. That just never happened before. But this is what Lenin has been writing in January 1919. Now, why is that? Well, it's very simple. The Bolsheviks feared the Cossacks because the Cossacks were armed. Uh, they could make an army in a day, and because they liked their liberty, they did not like somebody to tell them what to do. Uh, they cherished their independence, and they just didn't want somebody to abolish their uh, form of government, to take their land, and to take their rifles. So the conflict was uh, inescapable, unavoidable. Here's again, Sirtsov of the Don Bureau of the Communist Party writes to Lenin. 
Quote, decozakization has become, begun. Punitive detachments, карательные отряды, have taken hostages in rebellion districts. The hostages were handed over to the revolutionary committees and they were slaughtered. Now, again, here's a very frank documented report of Sertsov to Lenin that the government is actually taking hostages, by definition, innocent people, and then slaughtering them. Now, again, I cannot imagine any other government that I know of that would take citizens of its own country and then as hostages. I mean, and then executing them. This is terrorist government. A government is, acts like a terrorist organization in power. Here's another document by A. A. Frenkel, member of the Don Bureau, reported to the 8th Congress of Soviet. 8th Congress of Soviet is theoretically is the supreme uh, legislative body of the Communist Party, of, of the Soviet, I mean, the Russian Soviet Republic at that time. Quote, Uprisings show that until there is an iron Soviet regime in the Don area, the terrorist tactics of exterminating the greatest possible number of Cossacks will not in itself suffice. Again, I'm asking you, can you imagine any parliament in the world that would debate, discuss, and listen to a report of exterminating of the part of the population of their own country? This is totally unprecedented. It shows the terrorist nature of the Lenin Trotsky regime that hide it under the name of Marxist communist or whatever. These are just plain criminals. Um, now, uh, here are some other quotes at the situation in the countryside uh, in, in the Cossack lands uh, that I have. Okay, uh, special commissars in every stanitsas were set up uh, their so-called revolutionary tribunals and lodged campaigns of arrest, exiles, and executions, according to an eyewitness that I quote in my book, page 104. Most of the time, the tribunals dealt with cases on the basis of lists. Sometimes it took only a few minutes to consider a case, uh, and the sentence was almost always the same, shooting. Old Cossacks from various families were shot, Officers who had voluntarily laid down their arms were shot. Even Cossacks' women were shot. Uh, and this is from Starikov and Medvedev, a book uh, on the Russian Civil War. In some villages, there were mass executions and mass graves were later discovered. A member of the Don Revolutionary Committee, Valentin Trifonov, reported to Lenin that in the cellar of the Morozovsky District Revolutionary Committee, they discovered, quote, 65 mutilated corpses of Cossacks. And then Vyshensky District, they executed 600 Cossacks. Uh, this was perhaps one of the bloodiest campaigns in the territories conquered by the Bolsheviks. As a result, the Cossacks arose up in rebellion against the Bolshevik regime. Uh, Cossacks very clearly uh, set up their own uh, pre-existing uh, Cossack assemblies, and they were to raise other Cossacks, they start sending telegrams to the neighboring provinces, including to the Russian neighboring provinces, which was Voronezh. And here's what they wrote. We're not against the Soviets. We are for the people to elect Soviets themselves. We are against communists, communes, and the Jews. We are against requisitions, robberies, and executions. Now, Trifonov reported to Lenin that rebel Cossacks simply resent their own Bolshevik telegrams. Uh, now, by mid-April, there were 30,000 Cossack army uh, in rebellion in, in the Don area, which is today kind of like eastern Ukraine, but in fact, it's, it's this today also rebel provinces against the Ukrainian uh, government in Kiev. Uh, so they, they, this is a rebellious area. And they were, uh, the 30,000 were one third of the total strength of the Red Army in the south of Russia and Ukraine at the time. The rebellion was in the rear of the advance detachments of the Red Army. They were pushing further south to the Caucasus and to the, um, to the Black Sea coast. Uh, and so they were kind of like disrupted and in a sense blocked the, the possible return of the Red Forces to Central Russia by this gap that developed in the Bolshevik front. Now, uh, 
In response to this rebellion, uh, the Bolsheviks decided to double down on the executions and on mass murder. Here's another document by uh, uh, e. I.E. Yakir, uh, the 8th Army Military Council member, and he ordered, and I quote, In the rear of our forces, rebellions ignite. Measures must be undertaken to root out the very thought of rebellion. These measures are extermination of all those who rise in the rebellion, execution on the spot of all those who, possess, who are in possession of arms, and even extermination of a certain percentage of the male population. Now, again, one more document that sh shows extermination as official Bolshevik policy in the Don area. Uh, the Bolsheviks sent 14th Army against the rebels and it failed and recruited peasants from Russian provinces joined the Cossacks and refused to fight them. Uh, this was the beginning of the end of the Bolshevik rule in the Don. And uh, on the June 7th, the white forces that were locked in the North Caucasus since uh, the end of 1918, they together with the Kubine Cossacks joined forces with the Don uh, Cossacks, and there were 60,000 white army that basically in overnight became 100,000. Now, and that is this army that was going to launch a historic offensive against Moscow, and that is the only army that had a serious chance of crushing the Bolshevik regime later in 1919. Thank you, and don't forget to subscribe to my videos. Um, Bye-bye. Thanks.